Hi folks, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to have a look at the new TTC H40 CNC router from Two Trees. This is a large format desktop machine that uses NEMA 23 stepper motors to drive 16 mm lead screws on 20 and 30 mm tube rails on the X and Y axes and with linear rails on the Z axis to move the spindle at a max 1800 mm per minute travel speed around a total work volume of 1000 by 1000 by 100 mm. An even larger version will be available with a work area of 2000 by 1000 by 100 mm. The machine comes with your choice of either a standard 500 watt spindle, an 800 watt trim router, and or a 20 watt diode laser module. The motion controller comes with a touchscreen display and SD card slot for working offline, as well as Wi-Fi and USB connection ports, an emergency stop switch, a key switch, and spindle speed control. Eye and ear protection were included with the kit, as well as a long measuring stick for spacing the Y-axis rails and all the tools and fasteners needed to put it together, which only took me around 15 to 20 minutes. Two Trees designed it as simply as possible so that it's relatively quick and easy to assemble and disassemble for storage when it's not being used. But it weighs between 40 and 80 kilograms depending on the version, so a sturdy table is needed to mount it to. I plan on using the machine frequently, so I had built a dedicated table for it with a removable spoil board and T-nuts for clamping before it was delivered. After turning it on, I used the touchscreen on the controller to test the motion controls and spindle power to make sure everything worked. After verifying that everything works okay, I connected the machine to Candle software on my PC. This is a G-code sender that can be used for motion control, but more specifically to upload and send G-code files to the machine for processing. I prepared a file off-camera for carving my logo onto a piece of scrap plywood with a 30 degree V-bit. After loading the G-code file, I used the motion controls in Candle to jog the spindle to the origin over the workpiece and zeroed its position using a sheet of paper. Then I started the engraving. You can also use a Z-probe for more accurate positioning. This took around 5 minutes to finish and everything seemed to work out okay. I think the bit's a little dull though because it chipped some of the veneer on the plywood, but I gave it another go on another scrap piece and then switched over to a 1 8 inch 2 flute down cut end mill to cut the logo free of the plywood.
Next, I carved the same logo into a piece of black acrylic. After the logo was carved, I switched over to a 1 quarter inch O-flute bit to cut the logo free. I finally stocked up on proper end mills recently, and purchased this bit and many others from a local supplier here in New Brunswick, Canada. If you're Canadian and are interested in supporting a Canadian business, then check out their site at cncbits.ca. They have a huge selection of end mills and router bits, and are sure to have just about anything you need. These 500 watt spindles are limited in what they can do and are best suited for small jobs like this. To make better use of the large work area, I switched the spindle with a Makita RT0701C trim router for more cutting power, better cooling and stability. Next, I connected the machine to Easel Pro software, which is like Candle in that it serves as a G-code sender, but it can also be used to create your projects and generate G-code files from them. So it's an all-in-one software that has just about everything you need to create and set up your project for processing, from drawing tools and 3D carving, to material and bit selection with preset cutting parameters to help mitigate the guesswork if you're a beginner. The downside is that it's a web-based subscription service, but it doesn't cost much and you can easily recoup the monthly charge by putting the machine to work for an hour. After setting the machine up, I imported a 3D model of Two Trees' logo to carve from 3 quarter inch thick MDF using a 1 quarter inch 2 flute upcut end mill at the machine's max rated travel speed of 1800 millimeters per minute, or 70 inches per minute, which really isn't great for achieving optimal chip load. Ideally, it should be somewhere between 100 and 120 inches per minute to avoid creating a lot of dust or burning the edges. But I managed to get good results by adjusting the speed dial on the router to 3 to keep the RPM below 18,000 and used a 40% step over with a 1 8 inch depth of cut per pass. This job took around 2.5 hours to finish. Next, I cut a stool for the workshop from 3 quarter inch birch plywood using the same end mill and settings, which took around an hour to finish. Next, I 3D carved a Canadian flag into MDF using the same quarter inch end mill to rough out the bulk of the material, which took around an hour to do. Then I switched to a tapered ball nose end mill with a 2mm wide tip for the final pass, using 12% step over and a feed rate of 60 inches per minute, which took around 24 hours to finish. Because trim routers aren't technically designed for long continuous use, I run the job for around 4 or 5 hours and then paused it to let the router cool down and check the brushes before starting again for another 4 or 5 hours.
As I mentioned previously, the spindle can be replaced by the 20 watt diode laser module that's available for this machine, which happens to be the same module that they use for their TTS 20 Pro laser engraver, which I also reviewed last year. This module supports air assist for better cutting performance, but Two Trees didn't send an air pump for it, so I used the pump from the TTS 20 Pro kit instead. After switching from CNC router to laser mode in the controller, I connected the machine to Lightburn laser engraving software on my PC and clicked the Find My Laser button in the Devices wizard to add the machine to the Devices list, then I checked the device settings to make sure they were correct. Next I imported an image to engrave into a piece of birch plywood. With a max travel speed of just 1800mm per minute, this machine is considerably slower than a typical laser engraver like the TTS 20 Pro, which has a max travel speed of up to 30,000 mm per minute. For a 20 watt diode laser, I would normally engrave an image like this at around 15,000 mm per minute and 40% power. But because this machine is limited to 1800 mm per minute, I decided to set the power to just 2%. I also used Dither Image Mode and set the resolution to 500 dots per inch. Then I click the frame button to frame the work area and set the focal distance using the highest level of the provided multi-level focus block. With the module and plywood set, I clicked preview to make sure everything looked good before clicking start to start engraving. This turned out really good, however it did take over 10 hours to finish which is pretty slow for an image of this size. I guess having the ability to swap the router for a laser is better than not having the ability, but it would be nice if the travel speed was higher. If you'd like to see more of what this laser can do, check out my review of the TTS 20 Pro. But that's it for this video folks. Overall I think this is a good large format machine for hobbyists especially with it being easy to disassemble and store away so you're not losing shop space when it's not being used. But I do think the travel speed is too slow for competitive commercial use. Ideally, it should be nearly twice as fast. But for the average do-it-yourselfer, this is a decent kit that lets you make the bigger projects that you can only dream of with a typical 3018 machine. But let me know what you think of it in the comments, and if you're interested in learning more about it, then check out the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching, and take care folks.